Hmm, what's this? Hello, welcome back to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I continue with my Let's Play of Battle Brothers. It's finally out, it's fully released, it's time, it's here, it's ready, it's eager, it's excited. It's a game, I, I don't know if it has any of those emotions or those feelings, but I'm eager in all those other random things that I said, and we're going to continue on. We are actually playing as The Freak Show, minus the Bumpy banner still. And again, if they can't fix it by, we'll say, episode 4, five like after episode, episode six if they don't fix it by episode six we'll just run with this until the next season and then we will unleash the bumpy banner once again and hopefully it's glorious and awesome i don't know we'll see we will see either way folks we're about to go up against a possible deadly 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 foe i don't know let's find out let's see if the freak show has what it takes to take on those horrible horrible monsters of doom and death Crunching, munching, the snicker snacker of someone or something, enjoying a good meal. As you step through the cemetery, you stumble upon a clearing filled with, I don't even know what these things are, Natch, is it Harris or hers or something? Uh, they're huddled over the remains of what appear to have been the grave robbers you were looking for. The hideous monsters slowly turn to you, their red eyes widening at the sight of fresh meat. Well, I'm scared. Are you guys scared? Good, because you're all going to die in a few seconds. It's going to be glorious and terrible and slightly horrifying. What are they? Nak Zahara I got nothing. Well, thankfully, there's only six of them. Not that that helps me in any way, shape, or form, mind you, but there are only six fire into the crowd. I, I sort of want to. Um, oh, I hit someone. Yay! I, I, I really wasn't expecting to hit anybody. Alright. Well, that's fair. Um, nope. No such luck. We have Captain Javelin Face McGee over here. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that didn't work. Not surprising. Not surprising at all. I think we're going to shield up for this. Mm. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Well, I think this goes poorly. We'll find out soon enough, I suppose. Yeah, he's not really enjoying life as much as he used to. Neither is he. Oh, the surroundings are getting to be slightly terrifying, however... Not as bad as I was expecting, really. Alright, which one of you guys is hurt? Is it you? No. It's him. It's the one that's all bloody, <laughs> obviously. Gosh, this guy. Aha! Boy, we are really good at shooting things with our arrows, let me tell you. We are amazing. Amazingly bad at doing our one job that we, oh my gosh, that we have. All right. 56%, seriously? Okay, uh, anytime you want to land a singular attack, I would be willing to accept that. Like, at all. Literally every single person attacked there, not one actually landed a single attack until the last guy. It, it's it's kind of bad. Now, thankfully, they, they seem to not be super great at their job. This might go poorly. Not necessarily, though. Okay, okay. That hurt a little bit. I, I can get behind that hurting. There we go. Yeah, Stoic Geometry showing us what? And we still are terrible at shooting people. Hey, we hit somebody again. Sweet. And we did some more damage. Yay for things sort of working the way they're supposed to. 
Uh, you. <sighs> well, Antros, it, it's, it's not surprising, my friend. It is not surprising at all. Nope, nope, can't do that, okay. Well, oops, sorry. Well, let's go ahead and do a couple of stabby murder type things. Put our shield back up. And maybe remove his face? No? No face removals? Okay. Alright. That shield is really, really carrying the day here. Good dodging. Less good. He hit you in the head twice. I don't know how I feel about that. Not well. I feel not well about that. Oh, look. You guys are starting to, to bug out, to freak out a little bit. I am all about you guys dying and getting shot with real arrows and things. And thankfully it finally happened, so cool. Why don't you move down here and pretend like you're going to punch somebody because we know it's never going to happen. Um, I guess I'll wait? There we go. It's, it was a little bit of a weird situation to be in, but you know what? It's okay. It works. That works pretty well, too. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I can't move. Never mind. You stay put. You hop down. You just pretend like you're gonna do something cool, and then you come over here and make him very, very nervous. Okay. So this dude should be pooping himself if he's not already. He did do some more damage to our equipment. Which is not great because we don't have a whole lot of tools. However, Soy Geometry is going to show him what's what. Or is he? No, he's not. Alright, Antros, let's see your brawling skills, brother. Eh. 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 Darn it. Nope. Nope. Maybe. Alright, alright. And Solar Lancer, you held the line. You survived all of the onslaught. You deserve this kill. Hopefully you can land the attack. And you did. Perfect. Alright, and there we are. 166 damage all told. 163 over on this side. 125. Looks like Trenton's doing the most work every single time. Antros landing his total of 8 damage with his one punch after missing 4 javelin tosses. I just want to point out, javelins are awful. Just saying. Just saying. Anyway, moving beyond that. Uh, Switch Geometry did okay, he got two kills, and nobody really took a tremendous amount of damage. Most of it was armor damage. One HP damage, zero HP damage, and one HP. So, not bad. However, there is a problem with that, and that means, or that problem is, we have to repair all the broken equipment, and we only have five tools and or supplies at this point. Which, little known fact, is not a lot. It's not a lot, so we're going to kind of struggle a little bit with that. I sort of want to try those. I really do. But at the same time, eh, we should kind of focus on getting a few more folks before we do that, I dare say. And we may actually be able to do that here in just a moment's time. All right, we find Anton nestled into his chair holding a candlelight close to a well-worn scroll. He talks without looking up. My problem, did you take care of it? You nod. I wouldn't be standing here if I hadn't. Anton tips a hand to the corner of his desk. Your payment, 310 crowns as agreed upon. Hey, they no longer have terrified villagers. Sweet. So we actually solved one of the problems. That's awesome. I like that a lot, actually. So do you guys have better prices and st such now? Oh, you do. I'm going to sell it. I I'm too worried about keeping it for right now. Um, still really overpriced tools and supplies. However, ammunition's actually pretty cheap. Now, how does this compare? 470, or 40 to 70, 30 to 50. This is the better product. But... It's pretty expensive even still. Alright, so while we do this, guys and gals, I'm going to have you sit here think about what you've done so far. And I'm going to pretend like I am totally not trying to find my silly, silly, ridiculous list here. Got it. Alright, and now we can return back to the game. Sorry, guys. I had a different thing up that wasn't the list. I need the list. The list of Bumpy is here. 
and it will uh, allow me to hire other people. All right, let's take a look at who's hireable. All right, very expensive people that we cannot afford. Not really the play. So instead of doing that, let's go over here. Uh, I'm not gonna take this one, but we'll still read through it and get to the point where we're like, oh, let me think on that, and then we'll not do it. Anton welcomes you into his room and pours you a mug of water. Oh, water, thanks. He hands it over with a sheepish smile. I'd offer a bit of ale or wine if I had it on me, but you know how things are nowadays. He takes a sip and clears his throat. Of course, what I'm not short on are crowns, which means that you shouldn't be short on, you know, it's fine. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this conversation, right? Huh? Huh? Am I right? Am I right? I need you to go to a, a place by the name of the White Bones Hollow, just northeast of here. And retrieve a relic by the name of a Star Map Disc. Pretty simple, no? You ask what the relic is good for, the man explains. Town, townsfolk pray to it, though, or through it they find peace, call for the rains, fark their goats, excuse me, I don't care. Uh, they believe in it, and it keeps them motivated. For that alone, it's worth retrieving. It sounds simple enough, what's the pay? Uh, so 360 and 90 in advance. I'll accept the offer, but I'll need some time to think about it. I'm not ready to do that just yet. Alright, so before we actually do go out and do crazy things that will get us killed, which I, I mean, I am all for, let me tell you, I think we should maybe... Hmm, I don't know. I imagine there's probably more towns and stuff to the east. I sort of want to go to another town. Let's go try Tro Trogan. Trogan? Trojan? Trojan? Trogan? I, I got nothing. We'll try Trogan. That's what I'm gonna call. I'm gonna go with that. That's what I'm gonna call it. Trogan. All right. There's lots of things roaming around here. There's battles. It doesn't look like we can do anything to the battle sites, so that's good at least. I guess we're gonna follow the road, sort of, to Trogan. To Trogan. Trogan. That's right. And we'll see, there's tons of battle sites everywhere. I kind of wish you can go and like pilfer materials and equipment from there. But even if you can't, that's totally fine. Now, when you run through forest, one thing to be aware of and be careful about is it's always possible and usually somewhat likely that you may or may not run into a group of bandits that are lurking in the woods to ambush you. That is kind of a go-to move that bandits like to do, so just be aware that that's a thing that can and very well may happen. Very well may happen. So we got iron and goat pens and copper veins, and we're gonna wait it out here. Oh, I was gonna. Oh gosh, we have no food. Food's kind of important. I kind of that was an oversight on my part. My bad. We should probably get some food. Uh, prices aren't horrible for this, so we can actually afford that. It'll repair up a few pieces of our equipment. Let's see who's available here to hire. We have some miners, which is apparently all that we have here. And I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah, let's go. I guess we can go with you. They, they're all pretty much the same. We'll leave this spot. We'll go over here. And you are pretty burly and melee as Wow, there's actually a lot of... We, we haven't looked at all of our stuff yet. So I think we should do that at some point here, real, real soon. A pickaxe is a one-handed hammer. I think you're going to become a swordsman, my friend. You're going to use the falchion. And your 10 versus 30. The straw hat is definitely superior in many ways. Um, yeah, we'll give you this. You're not exactly the most powerful of individuals at this moment in time, but that's okay. Um, let me think. I gotta make sure that I don't do this improperly. Alright, so we have four more characters to get. So we're gonna have one more backline stabby guy. Uh, we're gonna have one more archer type guy. Okay, so that's two. Okay. So that means that we'll have two more frontline guys. So I'll probably have a two-handed hammer guy. And somebody else on the front lines whom I don't really know what I'm going to do with or how they're going to play out just yet. So, there you have it. So this is 15 to 30, not amazing. This is 35 to 45, so better in all ways. Okay. 
This will work. This will work. We will, we will handle this. All right, so what I think we're going to do right now is we're going to go take a look at all of our various characters and see what their perks and non-perks are, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so his background is a miner. Miner or mining is tough work. The sort of job men like. Oh, we should name him first. Let's let's do that. Let's do that before we do anything else. All right, so it's going to be Kenny, the Voodoo. Voodoo. All right, so Kenny the Voodoo. Um, job like uh, men like Kenny flock to. After his own son lost his life in the mines, the man left the job forever. Kenny has the stocky frame of a miner. Unfortunately, he also has the lungs of one as well. All right, he's brave. He's got plus five to resolve. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, just keep on going. This character will bravely venture into the unknown. He's irrational, however, though. The glass is half empty now, but was half full just a moment ago. He has a plus 10 or a minus 10 randomly, or uh, resolve randomly at every morale check. That's not great. And then he's in good spirits. Recent events have left this character in good spirits. It will probably pass as reality takes a grip, but for now, things are looking well. Has a 25% chance to be confident when he starts. Alright, cool. We have Trenton the Fox. All right, he is a companion. Trenton is not known to be a big talker, but he has every right to be. A misfired crossbow nearly took out your eye. Hadn't Trenton's shield been there to stop it? With quick whirls and whips of his shield, the man deflected all manner of mortal danger. Although you rather, although rather quiet, you found Trenton's place in a shield wall to be rather indispensable. He is fearless. There are a lot of old friends to meet in the afterlife. This character is not afraid of death. Alright, and Axel the Dark Hero here. He is also a companion. Brooding and at times suicidal, it's no surprise that Axel is frequently found diving into battle with nothing more than a large two-hander. A strong brute. You once saw Axel kill someone just on his backswing. He'll use any weapon you give him, but Axel has a, a proclivity toward those that can make calamitous ruin out of a man's body. That is terrifying. He's a pessimist. Glass is definitely half empty. Well, that's not great. Good morale fades away faster. Uh, resolve, minus five resolve is negative morale checks. Eh. Eagle eyes, blessed with the eyes of an eagle, which is weird and creepy in a human. Uh, this character can spot a fly from a hundred paces away. Well, good for him. That's not very useful for a big two-handed weapon user, but that's cool. Cool. We go to Solar Lancer, the sleeping. I just realized that I used a capital L here. And for all those that have um, OCD, that was probably driving them crazy. My apologies. All right, farmhand. A farmer hates to see his land fertilized in blood, but that's becoming more and more common these days. Solar Lancer became a farmhand to help feed his dozen kids. Oh my gosh, and two wives. Polygamy. Sadly, his farm was one of the first to be attacked during these trying times. Don't let his simple past fool you. Solar Lancer could fit right in with any wrestler or fighter. Also, he's bloodthirsty, so that's kind of terrifying. This character is prone to excessive violence and cruelty toward... I mean, he does have two wives. I mean, it, it does make sense. Sorry. Sorry. And cruelty toward his enemies. An opponent isn't good enough dead. His head needs to be on a spike. Or a pike. Uh, all kills are fatalities. What? That's a Amazing. That's 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 really good, especially against undead. That's really cool. Oh, it tells us how long they've been with the company. Oh, that's cool too. I never saw that. With the company for seven days, took part in three battles and has two kills. The most powerful opponent vanquished was Hogart the Weasel. That's pretty cool. He's in the fighting line. Oh, that's neat. I like that. I never even noticed that before. Cool. All right, he was a monk trying to find peace in a land of ruin. Antras become had became a monk, though a believer in the gods. The monk could not stand what atroc atrocities his head priest committed in their name. The monk eventually left to seek spirituality on his own terms. You get the feeling Antras wants release from this sinful world. If that's the truth, then he has come to the right place. Yes, he has, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, he has. He's fearless. Okay, uh, he's bright. This character has an easier time than most grasping new concepts and adapting to the situation. He gets more experience. 
Good for him. Alright, we're looking at the Iron Cowboy right now. He's a messenger by trade. Once a re well, I guess technically he's a mercenary by trade at this point, or a sellsword, if you will. Once a refugee, Iron Cowboy figured he might as well deliver letters if he was already wandering the land. Claiming to be a budding hero, Iron Cowboy now believes the task of delivering mail is beneath him. Few, if any, of Iron Cowboy's skills make him ready for combat, but he does have some sturdy legs. Hopefully, just not for running away. Well, his uh, archery skills are quite the worst I've ever seen in my entire life. He did go hungry. Oh. Well, that's not great. I'm sorry, guys. Are all of you mad at me because I let you go hungry for, like, two seconds? Yes? Okay. Well, I apologize. We will not let this uh, stay for long. Alright, Stoichiometry the Magician. Uh, he was a strong and able fisherman, as long as there was no storm, he was out there fishing day in and out. It was after a priest of the gods told Stoichiometry that l the life of a fisherman was not what they desired of him, but that they wished for him to spill blood in their name, that he would set his eyes on another trade. Visiting the tavern one evening, a new opportunity presented itself with the promise of coin for dangerous work. He's fragile. So, with a physique like an eggshell, this guy is not a natural-born brawler. Thank God he's on the back lines. Minus 10 HP. He's irrational. The glass is half empty now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's constantly crazy. Alright. And then, finally, Nathaniel the Heathen. He, too, was a bro-fisted uh, companion. Nathaniel's one of the more talented marksmen you've encountered in your travels. It is said that he can split an arrow mid-flight. While he has a fondness for killing from afar, Nathaniel's no slouch in close quarters combat, either. I think what we might want to do is when we get the next tier of bow, maybe we throw that onto Nathaniel and we switch the crossbow to whoever else has the lower skill. That way we don't have a lot of issues. I do not like the fact that he's got negative in his ranged defense though. That does make me nervous. Alright, so we got to know our battle brothers a bit better. Let's see what we have here. Sigmund of Trogan. Looks at some of his books, per perusing what appear to be a good deal of numbers. Okay. I got a shipment of particular goods going to Norholm. Norholm? Sure. And they're leaving soon. I need a bunch of sturdy swordsmen to help make sure it gets there safely. Are you up to it? Let's talk money. Alright, 150 crowns is what he'll be giving us. Uh, I want to be paid more for this. This is it then. You'll get 150 crowns when the contract is done. Ah, right, well, whatever. You didn't actually raise your price, but I'll accept it, I suppose. Alright, escort the caravan to the northeast. I will accept this contract. And when we are finally ready to depart, we shall do so. And it may or may not be glorious. These are slightly overpriced, but not terribly so. The bread's even a bit expensive. And the goat cheese is even a bit expensive, too. Alright, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to sell that... This and this. I know it's not much money that we're making. Uh, 20, 35. I guess we'll sell the butcher's cleaver. Alright, so at this point, we do need probably another chunk of food. So we're going to buy one of the goat cheeses as well. Just to make sure we don't starve to death on our journey ever again. Alright, so we are out and about. We are going, hopefully, fairly quickly to a place that will not get us killed. Well, I didn't get to see where we were heading just yet. Alright, you meet a monk on the roads, and with him is a donkey-pulled cart, the poor uh, draft animal carrying its head in head low in mute exhaustion. Broom straw and virid moss are strung up one side of the cart, both twisting eagerly in the very winds that dried them. And some pots and pans clatter like rustic wind chimes as the modest wares come to a bumbling stop. A barrel totters on the edge of the cart's bed, and a couple of bees sway to keep up, poking and prodding at its cracks with thirsty curiosity. The monk lifts a wool hat up out of his face, but the lip of it folds back down over his eyes. He takes it off altogether and passes a sleeve across his brow. Carrying a jolly smile, he seems not at all disturbed by the veritable living armory standing before him. 
Evening, gents. Don't suppose you're the kind to march beneath the Lord's banner. You look like cell swords to me. What is it that you carry, sir? Aye, I was thinking you'd ask. This here is Bessie, a cow's name for a donkey's arse. <laughs> Don't worry, she won't kick ye. She's all hot out, see? What she carry? Well, that's beer. For men yonder, so that men, that, so that they may drink to men above. If you don't mind, or if you don't mind my business, I'd like to get be. I'd like to get going on where I be going and doing the thing that I be doing, man. Let me go. It's what I do. The monk picks up of the reins of his Jenny as he readies to start moving. How many crowns for a round of beer? You hold up your hands, stopping the monk before he can get going again. He sighs slowly, lowering the reins out of his hands. Feeling as though he may be getting the wrong impression, you quickly ask if he has beer to spare for your men. You are more than willing to pay. The monk looks back at his stock for a moment, then turns around. I give your men a sip or for a crown or two. Yeah. Uh, don't mind the bees around the top. They'll scurry when you come, but if you scurry when they scurry, they'll scurry after you. Strange little gits. You ask the man how much he wants. I'd wager ten crowns a head will do. Uh, I'm no businessman, though. I might be taking advantage of myself here. A round for the whole company! It's eighty crowns, but hey, everybody is happy now. Prost! You agree to pay the man what he asks for, and he opens his arm in invitation. Your men pop the lid off the cask and dip their cups in. They come to sit in the shade, sipping tankards and exchanging beers. The monk bids you a farewell, and the men all lift their cups to him in a loud, increasingly slurred cheer. Prost! All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to pause it right there. We're heading over here to Norholm in the very next episode. Again, hopefully, 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 the banner situation is fixed by the time episode six comes rolling around. And I, episode six might get delayed if that is the case. And yeah, we'll come back. The whole landscape will change and the events leading up to the whole landscape changing will change as well. But hopefully we'll be in roughly the same spot as far as food and everything else. And yeah, we'll, we'll be looking pretty good. Again, if not, that's totally fine. We'll hit it in season two with the bumpy banner and everything else. And it'll be good. All right, folks, until the very next episode, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later.